we're into the knockout stage of the Gold Money Asian Rapid Tournament. I want to show you a dramatic game from the match between Arjun Aragaisi, 17-year-old Indian qualifier, and Levon Aronian. Aronian won the preliminary all-play-all. And so this is a tough one for Arjun, but let's see what happens. So it starts out as a Ragazin, and now we transpose into a Nimzo Indian. And uh, Arjun plays this seemingly modest move, bishop d2, but this has become quite popular of late, actually. b6 is the, the normal move, and then bishop d3, bishop b7, and castles bishop e7. The bishop drops back uh, because black wants to play c5 without giving up that bishop for the knight. You want to preserve, preserve your dark squared bishop. I remember a game from the uh, Isle of Man uh, tournament in 2019 where Naya defeated Anand really nicely. He played rook c1 there. But knight e5 directly. So this is one of the ideas to play f4, this so-called Pillsbury attack, supporting the knight, going for a kingside attack. But after c5, actually f4 isn't so good here because of knight c6, putting immediate pressure on that pawn. So uh, Eragasi goes for a different idea, knight e2. And after knight c6, well, this is a little bit surprising, but he simply exchanged off knights. Now it seems as though black doesn't have any problems at all. Pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and bishop c3. But at least he's got these two bishops just raking across the board to the king side, so that has some potential. Nevertheless, one feels that black should be absolutely fine in this position with these beautiful central pawns. Queen b6 seems very reasonable and now knight g3 wants to come in on f5 so of course that is closed down. And now here, well one might anticipate b3 to stop that pawn advancing potentially and maybe give the queen some room to come here or maybe this bishop comes around to f3, that's another possibility. Maybe just rook c1 but I think uh, Eric Geisley's next move was just fascinating, so bold. He just gave up a pawn with b4. So pawn takes pawn and then bishop d4. So basically what he's done is he's made sure that this bishop is secure in the middle of the board. So if we just go back a move, in this kind of position, um, white always has to watch out for rook here and d4, shutting out that bishop. But after this, the bishop is a secure blockader in the middle of the board. So the queen is hit and comes back. Rook c1 attacks the bishop, which drops back, and now queen f3. So that pawn sacrifice has actually transformed the position. So this bishop has a beautiful foothold in the middle looking in both directions. The queen has succeeded in activating because that pawn is blockaded. There's no danger from the bishop. And now there, there is interesting potential on the king side. And here, uh, Aragaisi played h4. But he had a really interesting tactical hit here. He could have played knight f5. And here's the idea, after pawn takes, even queen f5 is interesting, but bishop c5. This is a forcing continuation. And now queen g3 check. And rook c7. Double attack. Wins back the piece. And because these pawns, particularly the pawn on f5, is weak, then white has excellent compensation. Must be better for white. Certainly easier for white to play. So an interesting tactical hit that certainly justifies this pawn sacrifice. Instead, Eric Geisley just played h4. He was really playing with a free hand, and that's impressive. 
fine. He missed this nice move knight f5. But I think just generally, you know, he's not afraid to go forward. Rook c8, h5. So softening up black's king position. Now, if uh, Aronian wants to kind of put a break on things, he could just exchange and bring the next rook over. He would be giving up that pawn in the corner, but it would take a lot of the, the danger from the position. Instead, well, he played boldly as well. He just made sure that this pawn, he kept his extra pawn, and of course there is potential for that queenside pawn majority. Bishop f5, things start to get very complicated again. That, of course, would be fatal if black took with the knight coming to f5. So rook takes rook, rook takes rook. And here, rook c8, not possible because of the bishop. Rook a6 is an interesting move with the idea of rook c6, but also defending along the sixth rank. But Aronian played knight e8, and he obviously missed what was coming next. Queen g4, just ramping up the pressure. And now, well, knight f6 is still okay for black, but knight g7. And here, Aragasi missed a win. He could have taken that knight on g7 and then played bishop takes g6. This is beautiful. If pawn takes bishop, knight f5 check at fork. And in this position, if the king drops, then the bishop just drops back and white's attack is just too much. He'd actually seen this idea, but wanted to do it in a different move order. He played bishop takes pawn, and then bishop takes knight on g7. Obviously, king takes bishop, losing to knight f5. But the point is, Aronian doesn't have to take that. And actually, Aronian finds an absolutely brilliant defensive move. I mean, it still looks as though black's king is being ripped apart here. But Aronian played rook c8. So allowing white to take on c8. And this is probably, well, certainly a, a safe continuation for white. In this position, well, pawns are now level. I don't think white is in any danger because on this side of the board, well, how far can those pawns go with the queen behind? And and with, with the king open, actually, black has to be a little bit careful. I think it's equal. But Eric Geisy showed real ambition here. He ducked the rook exchange and just wanted to play on. Very understandable when black's king is weak, but he takes a big risk. In fact, Aronian is, is okay after rook c4, and he can stabilize the position like this, just knocking black back white pieces, and, and black is okay there. But rook c2 played by Aronian. Bishop, whoops, let's go back. Rook c2 played, bishop a1, so with some ambitious idea here. So now rook c4, e4 is interesting here, just blowing open the center, but queen e2 played, and bishop d4, so a solid blockade back on d4. Bishop f6, and now, well, several very con tempting continuations. Once again, it's possible to play like this. Uh, you know, when I was commentating on this, uh, I I suggested this idea and, and it, it looks so tempting because it, well, it, it tries to get White's Rook into the game, basically. Obviously, that can't be taken. And somehow, yeah, Black's pieces look a little bit strange now. Queen g4, also possible, but Aragaisi took, and then played king h2. So he's still trying to keep the pieces on the board, basically. Um, you know, wants to, wants to get off the back rank, and that might make it easier to attack later. Bishop takes bishop, pawn takes, and rook c2. And queen f3. So I think it's really interesting that Aragaisi has managed to keep the pieces on the board. He has spied the fact that Black's king is exposed. Now, at the moment, there's no hit, but that's what he's angling for. 
he's banking on the fact that his king is safer than black's and in rapid play well he might have a point let's have a look queen e6 queen f4 creeping up looking down here looking down here nice move king g7 well that feels like such a natural move to step up to sort of get closer to this pawn uh, the computer likes bishop a6 for what it's worth but anyway doesn't feel king g7 feels like a natural human move point is this actually that rook d3 is now starting to get a little bit unpleasant bishop a6 would have prevented that queen f6 queen g4 with a threat and now it is very unpleasant in fact there is a a sneaky defense for black and that is simply to play queen d6 to pin the knight and black is still okay but queen takes f2 by Aronian. They were playing with just seconds on the clock. I'm afraid that loses to knight h5. The knight bounces back to f4, threatening mate on g6. The rook steps back to defend. Rook h3 check. Queen d7, and the king is getting hounded. And here is the key move. Rook f3 hits the queen and lines up against the king. If queen h4 check, white counters with a check, and that is mate next move. So in the game, after rook f3, queen takes d4 played, and knight e2 wins the queen, and of course, mate will follow shortly after that. So brilliant stuff from Eregaisi. What struck me most in this game was his ambition. You know, he wanted to take the fight to his opponent right from the word go. So in this position, b4, no hesitation, just went for it. And later on, yeah, he missed a couple of continuations that were possibly strong. This move, knight f5, but h4, he's just attacking. And later on, in this position... Here, I think this is extraordinary, against his illustrious opponent, he spurned taking this, which would have led to, well, let, let's say at least a draw for white, but certainly a safe position. He went for it with rook d1, and his bravery, his ambition paid off. Really impressive. Now, <laughs> after, after four games, it was actually two all, uh, Levon hit back but still that first set was tied so they go into set two with all to play for it's absolutely fascinating to see Levon getting shaken up by his younger opponent it was an amazing day actually uh, Wesley So was beaten by Magnus Carlsen fairly convincingly there was lots of ups and downs there but the big shock was Anish Giri getting absolute drubbing from Vladislav Artemyev who looks like he's on fantastic form. Do join me on Chess24 for live commentary and uh, don't forget like, comment, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching.